Hello guys, something a bit different today. Um, first thing you'll notice is that uh, this is already used and sort of at the state of the end of the video because I might have forgotten to uh, do this sort of intro before. So really what I'm going to try today is to use some of the old um, glass tubes. Is to use some of these things here, they magically appear. Um, to make our own uh, fluorescent lamps, just that there's no fluorescence and uh, they're shit, <laughs> really. So actually, they're just got, uh, we're just trying to make some uh, gas discharge tubes and uh, see some hopefully nice uh, emission spectra of these things. Well, actually, not the spectra, the color, you know, lazy man's spectra. Just look at it with your eye and say, hey, that looks red. That's probably hydrogen. Um, Oh, the gases we're going to use aren't the standard ones, I'm, because I don't have access to those. <laughs> we're going to just use oxygen and hydrogen. Now, um, be warned, this experiment does not work out as planned, but... Uh, oh well, it uh, at least is worth a try. And these things do actually work, so... Uh, you know. If you like to see that, stick around. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So, uh, let's get started. Alright, so, uh, I've set up the uh, apparatus, if you will. Very, very professionally, of course, as you can see. <clears throat> and uh, we'll just try to uh, see if we can get some oxygen out of this. Gonna just uh, absolutely professionally pan up here. Wow. So incredible. Just ignore the mess here and there and... Actually, this isn't even all that messy. The mess is in the areas that aren't really in shot right now. So I've just uh, put two inverted bottles into here, sucked all of the air out f with these tubes. This thing here is going to be the one... Don't fall over. Stay there. <laughs> this is going to be the one where the hydrogen uh, would, would come through if I actually pull it out. We'll see. And uh, this is just normal distilled water that I've put some uh, bicarb into. Because, you know... Apparently that is what you do for uh, electrolysis where you want to get oxygen as well as hydrogen Because I don't want to put any uh, sodium chloride into it because then you're just gonna get chlorine on the uh, positive uh, electrode Is it the positive one? Anyway, on, on the the one that would usually get the oxygen <laughs> and um, To avoid this I have used bicarb because well, I'm such a good chemist that I know that you just do that and Absolutely didn't just look it up on Wikipedia. So yeah, there. Um, <clears throat> so what we'll just try is we'll just turn this on for a very short time. There are stainless steel electrodes. I've got no idea if they're going to degrade or whatever. We'll see, but uh, we'll just turn it on for a second, see if there's more than just a little bit of gas outgassing from the bicarb, and uh, hopefully it will work. My phone is starting to play up. Uh, I've turned up the power now. Issue is we're at 30 volts and only have 100 milliamps flowing. Yeah, that should technically take forever to generate a hundred mils of gas. So, uh, we'll see if that improves. I sure hope it does. It also seems like there might be something green on the bottom there. That might just be the uh, tin messing up though, I don't know. We are getting some gas though, which is nice. I think I might have wanted to add a bit more bicarb because even well it didn't all dissolve hmm. I'm gonna just stop it actually <clears throat> the issue is just that the water conductivity is so low that uh, even at 30 volts we've barely got any current flowing it was uh, deionized or demineralized or whatever water before uh, I, I put the bicarb in I can't reach it, damn it. <laughs> oh man, how professional of me again. And uh, so it's not very conductive. I just hoped that the bicarb would be, you know, a bit more effective in making it conductive, but apparently it isn't. So, uh, Wikipedia, not necessarily fail, but not 100% accuracy there. I mean, I suppose it is correct because it does work. We're getting some. Uh, gases here. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's actually fairly decent speed. Might have also just been 
wrong with the calculations. Because from uh, what I calculated, with one molecule of oxygen needing four electrons for it to be generated, and, um, you know, ideal gas law and whatever, that we'd need one and a half thousand coulombs to generate a hundred mils of oxygen, which at a hundred milliamps would take forever, because <laughs> obviously uh, that would be 0.1 coulomb per second, you know. 0.1 amps, that's that's literally the definition, and uh, yeah, that, that would be slow. I was hoping to get to an amp, but uh, that attempt seems to have been foiled. Oh, and I can see that the video is flickering, damn it, I'm sorry. There you go, is it still flickering? It is still flickering, fuck. What if I change that? It doesn't make any difference. Anyway, I, I hope it's not too bad. So, uh, it seems that the problem wasn't necessarily water conductivity that uh, caused the low current, but uh, also the fact that I have a very small cross-sectional area in the bottom of the uh, bottle that uh, can even have the current flow through it. Yeah, the, there, if you can see it. It was all the way down on there, and uh, now that I've pulled them off, we're pulling half an amp. Still at 30 volts, so this is going to be getting warm, I suppose. Uh, but we'll see. Further pulling out doesn't really seem to do much. Okay, it does actually do a lot. Now we're at 0.7 amps. Dropping down again as, we, as I lower it. So there you go. But I think 0.5 amps would be decent enough. That would mean we'd need basically an hour to generate 100 mils. We'll just need to push it down again when we want to suck out the gas. Uh, okay, slight problem, maybe. I'm just starting to notice on the bottom there that the uh, electrode is starting to turn black. Black? Black. Um, and that means that it's reacting in some way. And uh, also, I'm seeing that the entire water here is turning sort of green, which is uh, weird. Let me just try to darken this, maybe. Can you see that? Sort of a bluish green here. A bluish green here and uh, clear there. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I hope I'm not generating some other gases that uh, I might not necessarily want to have mixed in with oxygen there but I suppose we'll see we are getting uh, to a fairly decent amount of gas on the top now yeah I must say I like it so the hydrogen we should technically be able to pull out already uh, and oxygen we'll see now I think that is actually fairly decent that uh, reasonable that this is about twice the volume of that yeah, because if you look at it, this is a sort of at an angle and uh, much lower here than there, and this, uh, yeah, I think that is reasonable to say that this is twice that, meaning that this is the hydrogen and this is the oxygen. Awesome, wait, let me zoom out. Hello, camera, let me zoom out. Yes, very nice. Alright, so uh, the other thing that I just uh, realized is that I don't actually have any way of taking the gas out of here, putting it into something else to test. <laughs> um, bit of an oversight, if I'm honest, but uh, I don't have a pump that could suck and blow at the same time without contaminating the, the gas stream with some uh, air or just sucking this volume in like 10 milliseconds, so... We'll just have to assume that this is the hydrogen, that is the oxygen. The ratios don't seem to fit as well as they did initially anymore. This isn't, like, half as much as this, but, uh, uh, yeah. 
I don't know, and this is also very, you know, cyan niche color. I believe that is actually coming from the uh, uh, the wire that I've wrapped around it, and you can actually see on the bottom there, maybe a little bit, if I move the lamp over so that there's light on it, that there's a tiny bit of um, whatever the fuck that is that is mixed in with the water, because I believe it is mixed and not uh, and not dissolved. That and it, whatever it is, it is on the bottom here as well. So my plan is now to uh, vacuum out some of the oxygen, flush, well, hopefully oxygen, <laughs> flush this tube here with, uh, with it and uh, use that to flush this tube that we have here and use that to flush this tube here. Whatever it is, we need to get the remaining air out of it. I just realized that I think that there's water in there. Fuck. Uh, right, so we're gonna have to find some way of actually getting the water that would have made its way into here out without that going to the pump. Um, damn. But uh, once we've done that, we will put one of the small glass uh, tubes here, vacuum that out, and then uh, fill that with oxygen at a very low pressure from the vacuum pump over there. There. And uh, we'll see if we can get it to glow. I really hope I can manage to. It'd be annoying if I didn't. But, uh, you know, because then this entire setup is worthless, pretty much. Uh, wait. I think I just caught the failure of the wire, yes. Ah. Um. That's a problem. I caught it on video as well. What kind of a random... Uh, what kind of a coincidence is that? The wire just... Uh, got fucked, apparently. It just got dissolved on the bottom there from the... Uh, accelerated corrosion. Hmm, so we'll have to fix that. Shit. Right, but we have got some gas in there. We're gonna experiment with these two first. If that's not enough, which it probably will be, then uh, we'll see further. All right, preparation done. We've got uh, two pieces. I didn't actually get all the phosphor out, but that should be enough. If we just, you know, cut it here and maybe here, we've got three and then another one or two out of this. So we'll just do that. Now to split them, uh, you could do it sort of the proper way, trying to like scar the surface with something, whatever. Really the easiest thing is to just take some pliers and cut it, not in your hand, because it'll spray glass uh, everywhere, but just over your bin. I, mean, yeah, I just smashed it actually. So, um, I'm not gonna put an electrode in because that was a bit meh last time and I think I actually fucked it up because of it. Uh, it didn't work, so... Oh yeah, right, you actually didn't see that last one. Now what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna melt it together. Probably heat, not just the front. Try to seal it. I don't have any tools for this. I usually use, I think, graphite something to do this, but uh, just hoping that this is gonna work. So the issue is that uh, you're probably not going to be able to see this because this is just too small. Is it even in focus? Yes. Coincidentally it actually was. Right, so uh, there is a very very small pinhole through it I believe. We'll just test this. So uh, around the end we'll wrap some of the whatever color tag it is. Make sure it's sealed and just push it onto the vacuum connection. 
And uh, now I'm gonna just wanna vacuum it down and see if it actually holds a vacuum. So I'll open, get that out of the way. Lucky this didn't splinter just in front of my face. Put something underneath here. Um, and turn on the pump. Seal the pump connection. And see if it holds. And actually it does seem to. It is even going down a bit. So this thing is now in a nice vacuum. Doesn't seem to be going up. And uh, I actually just want to seal the end and test it on my coil. See what happens. So the sealing, you really just want to sort of heat it up very, very evenly. Because if you just heat it up in one spot, it's going to collapse. Just like it almost did there. And you're going to want to just uh, slowly pull away. Hopefully while making it seal. There we go. I did not hear any sort of pfft or whatever. That's always a good sign. <laughs> don't touch them. Of course, also don't touch the end that you just heat it to a few thousand, well, to over a thousand degrees, not a few thousand. That would be clever. Fuck. Alright, so uh, this is the beautiful end that I did in the beginning. That should be cold now, and it is. And this is the other end. I do see something that is slightly worrying, though, and that is condensation in this. So it could be that there was still some water vapor in here, that it didn't dry out. Fuck. I'll ju we'll just put it on the coil and see what happens. Alright, so the image will have to be a bit noisy, but... Uh, I'm hoping you're able to see that uh, the gas inside the tube actually starts lighting up before we even get streams out. Lit up now. It's even fairly visible. I've just increased the power of the Tesla coil a bit. And it popped. Now this popping actually occurs quite quickly. I believe because the streamers with their heat melt the glass and the vacuum breaks. But we saw something. Okay, now I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to focus on this. Actually, I am. Do you see here that there's a tiny little nick in the glass? This is where the streamer melted it and it uh, popped. So that's the issue. Let's just focus back again. There we go. Now, so uh, this is of course no good anymore. And we'll have to cut one side off to actually get to the insides of it. So we'll just cut off just where that was. There we go. Maybe a bit further than necessary, but okay. And uh, there we go. This end should still be sealed. So we'll just... Uh, Pull this here back. That has actually held the vacuum until now. That is impressive. So, roll that flat again and just take some new stuff. Actually, first, one thing I like to do is to actually dry this thing because it was obvious that that was uh, an issue. There was like condensation visible on the inside just then. <laughs> You see what I see? See how much gas is in here? We had a leak somewhere. Ah, oh, no! Um, we're gonna try this out anyway, so maybe we'll see a difference from the sort of very, very nitrogen-loaded uh, uh, spectrum of the usual just air discharge lamps, or what we just had, sort of water. I don't know, it was fairly white actually, I don't know what it was, but it wasn't just air. But since I did wash this thing with, with uh, water after removing the phosphor, that I think is just the most reasonable assumption what it could be. That looks okay. Seal it off. Pull it back in. There we go. Now, the idea is... To basically flush this so what we'll do is we'll want to seal the connection from the pump and just let it come up to atmospheric by sucking in the gas from here so 
I am not sure if you're going to be able to see this here, but uh, it is upside down, so we'll just suck it back down. It goes very fast because the actual uh, volume is very low. Now this should actually go a bit lower. Don't know what's going on there. And then we'll just, uh, it might be because it's upside down, and then we'll just slowly fill it up again. I see water moving along the hose there. That's a bad sign. Again. So we'll do this, I don't know, three, four times maybe. It is holding a vacuum, which is good. The water is now here, so I think one more washing should be acceptable. Basically what we're doing right now is we're replacing the atmosphere in here. Okay, now I've turned the exposure up as high as it will go, so it will look really bad, but maybe you'll still be able to see something and turn the exposure up all the way. You see how that looks sort of a little bit greenish? A lot more greenish than I'd expect it to be. That is awesome. Alright, so I've got some lost footage here. My camera said, hey! I'm recording! The record button turned red, but it wasn't recording. So currently I'm uh, re-pressurizing this thing with the whatever the other gas is. And I've already got a lot of water in the line because I fucked up and uh, quite a bit of water might have made it to the vacuum pump. Shit. You see what I see? There's water in here. I, I don't want to say fuck my vacuum pump, but... Uh, oh no, it just had a bit of a diet of, diet of uh, water. So I want to dry this here out as well, make sure that it all evaporates. There will be some sodium in here now as well, unfortunately. So, because this is now the bicarbonated water, it's not bicarbonated, it's got bicarb in it. I can actually light on fire, I did not know that. <laughs> so, turn it up off again. Let it de vacuum and uh, try this out. being happy and saying that the other one wasn't a failure because it looked slightly greenish was false. Damn. Yeah, as you saw, it kind of failed. They both looked the same. I was kind of, you know, biased by my hopes that uh, this would look kind of greenish for the oxygen because that's a spectrum I found for it, but that was monatomic oxygen, which is like, the fuck, we're not in the upper atmosphere here. So, um... I was biased and was like, yeah, it looks a bit green, but it, it didn't really. And the hydrogen one, which really should have been a bright red or, you know, purple red, just didn't look that at all. So something is bad with the setup. I'm going to try this again later, but uh, yeah, so for now, failed experiment. But yeah, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. If you're interested in more of these sorts of random things, not chemistry most of the time, I'm bad at that, I admit. Um, then subscribe to the channel, I do sort of electronic stuff most of the time and, uh, you know, sometimes this random chemistry stuff as well. So, uh, yeah. See? No, wait, I can't use that, that's from Cody. Um, just... Goodbye. That's just so fucking weird.